Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Dave. And in this quick video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 mistakes which people make when using MagMe. Now, Dave, this is more of like a record for me because they come up so often within the forums and I've kind of like narrowed them down to the top 10 because I pretty much guarantee that you're going to run into one of these at one point in time. And it's more like a checkbox for me because I've probably run into all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So mistake number one, and this has to come first because it's relating to security. And the reason why I've brought this up is because there's two versions of MagMe available. There is the developer's version, which you can download from GitHub, or there is the Understand and E version. Now, if you're using the Understand and E version, then you can just fast forward past this section because it really doesn't apply to you. However, if you're using the developer's version of MagMe, then MagMe is not protected out of the box for you. Now, what that means is that someone could very easily guess that you're using your domain name.com forward slash MagMe. And Dave, one of the dangerous ones is that they could potentially delete all of our inventory. There is a button in MagMe which you can click and it will delete all of your inventory for you. So this would just be someone who wanted to cause disruption to your business. They couldn't get access to any sensitive information. They could just delete your entire inventory. Yes, they can do that as well. And I'll explain why. Okay, so the easy one, they can just press a button which says delete and it will delete all your product data. It also, because MagMe shows the database username and password and location, they could potentially have access to your entire Magento database. Now, this is really simple for you to solve. And there's two steps within this blog post. The first one is just rename the MagMe folder to anything else than MagMe because every developer installs it in the MagMe folder. So don't call it MagMe, call it Matt, call it Dave, call it Joe or whatever your name is. That's a very simple protection. So rename the folder so it cannot be easily guessed. The second option is to protect the folder using a HT access file. Now, I'm not going to go into the details on how you can do this over on the blog post at understandingy.com forward slash MagMe hyphen mistakes. There is a link there to called at uh, securing MagMe further. That will take you to a video tutorial and show you how to easily set that up with cPanel. Now, if you are using the Understand and E version, like I said, you don't need to worry about this because one of the first things which I did, and let me just grab the tab at the top, was to incorporate a login system to MagMe so this wouldn't be a problem for you. I also wrote an installer script as well, so it made it an awful lot non-nerd friendly so the average user could actually use MagMe. But one of the key features is that there is a login system to MagMe and that will stop people from just guessing the URL and then you've got at least a very basic protection to your MagMe installation. Now, next up is, Dave, we've got making up headers. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen this come up so many times. Yeah, we've seen this a lot of times in the forums. Now, just to give you an insight, understand the need, we've had like something like 14,000, 15,000 comments or posts over in the forums. And when it comes to MagMe, this is very much a common one. Okay, now, you can not make up your own headers for the CSV file which you're going to import using MagMe. Now, to help you, I've been and gone one stage further, and I've listed in all the common headers which you would want to put in your CSV file when you're creating new products. So SKU, attribute underscore set, type, store, configurable underscore attributes. Now, a big point here is that these headers are case sensitive. So if you type in SKU as capitals, SKU, then that will not work with MagMe and you're going to run into problems. So always keep your header file within your CSV file, which you're going to import using MagMe. All the top labels or the headers need to be in lower case. And that's the same for any custom attributes which you've been created in your Magento system. Next up, Dave, we've got the next obvious one, which is the, the thing to remember that 99.99999% of all errors are human related. It's rarely, well, very, very rarely an issue to do with MagMe itself. Because you always say, Matt, don't you? MagMe just works. 
Yeah, that's my instructions to Dave. So when Dave sees a question in the forums and I'm not available to answer it straight away, is that I've just basically told Dave that 99.9% .9 of all errors to do with Magby are human related. Or let me just be more accurate on that. It's data related. So the data which you're giving Magme to go on and import or create or update your products in Magento, that data is invalid in some way or another. Hence the mistake number two was check your headers. Okay, make sure you're using the standard headers within your file which you're uploading. Now the fourth mistake is trying to use the Magento data flow export file. Now, Dave, I'm gonna go into the, the, the side note here which is that Magento Dataflow is like the oddest import and export system I've ever come across personally. So in the last decade, why on earth would you want product data split out on separate lines to make it almost impossible for you to create that data with a third party system? So what I'm trying to say here very politely is that the Magento Dataflow and export system isn't that great. Whereas compared to Magme, you have one product per row, whereas in Dataflow you have lots of rows and it makes it very complicated for you to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So my point here is that you can use a straight export out of Dataflow to then go and re-import with Magme. You are going to need to work on that file. You are going to need them to get them into a separate row per product. And my biggest tip or suggestion for you is to spend the time and the effort to make Magme as your master system for importing and creating products. So number one, it's ridiculously fast. Number two is that if you are now storing your products in Excel rather than trying to create them manually in Magento or trying to use that awkward data flow tool which you do get with Magento, Magme will just make your life an awful lot easier in the long term. But I do appreciate that it will take a while for you to transpose or edit any existing data so that you can use Magme. It is a bit of a steep learning curve to begin with, isn't it, Dave? Oh, absolutely. For someone who's not nerdy like myself with this sort of stuff, it's not the most fluent piece of kit to get your head around, but it's so incredibly useful. Yeah, and it's incredibly fast. So I don't know how many times faster it is than the standard Magento data flow. But if you are importing lots of products, it is definitely the way to go. Now, moving on to mistake number five. Dave, this is to do with configurable products. And this has caught me out so many times. And again, I've seen it in the forums so many times as well. One of the coolest plugins with Magme is that you can create simple and configurable products on the fly and Magme has got this ACE card which is the configurable items processor and it will automatically attach the simple products to the configurable product for you. Now there is an if to this Dave which is that that is if you set that plugin to auto match the simple SKUs before configurable to equal yes, and also set it to perform the simples and the configurable link as well. Now, actually now that I've just been read that out, it's probably much easier if I show you. So I've come into, and again, this version is gonna look slightly different to you if you're used to the developer's version. This is the understanding E version, which is basically the same, but with a much cleaner interface, and there's a few little tweaks in the background as well. Now scrolling down to the configurable item processor, which is down here at the bottom. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to highlight this on your screen for you. Number one, you want this plugin enabled and you'll want perform simples configurable link, auto match, and you'll most likely want the four simples visibility to be set as not visible individually. And that means that you don't end up with a bloated Magento website with all the different variations being shown. OK, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's what you want. Now, this also leads in to the other mistake, which is that if you did make some changes here, do remember to scroll back up and press the save profile button. If you don't press save profile, any of the changes which you've made further on down the page will not be saved. So make sure you press save profile on the right hand side. Mistake number seven. Dave, you've seen this in the forums numerous times, haven't you? Oh, yeah. This is not uncommon because it tends to be that once you start using Magme, you'll try and 
import one or five products to begin with or one variation product and it works and you get excited and then you think great i'm going to upload my thirty thousand inventory right now <laughs> all in one go <laughs> all in one go and the thing is this magmi can handle it magmi can handle squillions of product rows and it's extremely fast at doing that as well the problem is is that most web hosting has limits to the execution times for php now, this is actually a good thing when it comes to web hosting. You want that so that you don't have scripts running on endlessly. But this does actually cause a problem when importing large amounts of products is because Magme will time out. Now, the answer to this is to use the command line interface or CLI for short. Now, up on your screen right now, I've been included a couple of examples for you now. Because this is a little bit nerdy, I will leave you just to read this from the blog post over on understandingcom forward slash magme hyphen mistakes. So if that sounds like something which you run into on a daily basis, you definitely want to read that post. Now, I'm actually just going to point out this other little section down here at the bottom, and it's to do with a Unix application called Screen. Now, Screen does allow you to run multiple screens within a single SSH session. Okay, now, if I'm losing you here, just ignore this bit and we'll move on to the next one in a few seconds time. Now, Screen is really, really handy because you can have an open session. You can create a new screen. So you would type in screen hyphen DMS my screen. That will create a screen called my screen. Then you go screen hyphen R, so to retrieve that screen called my screen and then it's just like another window and the coolest thing about this is that you could go and set that import to run then if you press control a and d on your keyboard is that you'll then detach from that screen and that can then be running in the background and of course if you then lose connectivity with your session the import is still running in the background you don't have to go and restart it and of course you can go back and check on it in 10 minutes half an hour and see if it's completed or not the next mistake is that, uh, my products are not showing on the website. Dave, I would have to say that this is like the most common mistake with Magme. Yeah. I mean, I've come across it a few times. I remember asking you and you basically have to set that reminder that Magme isn't a Magento extension, but a database extension. And that's where the crucial difference lies, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So Magme, when you load a product in using Magme, it goes straight into the Magento database. That's why you can see it there in the admin. However, you won't see it on the Magento front end until you either re-index Magento or you press the save button on that newly created product. So our point here is that don't panic. This is perfectly normal. This is how Magme works. So I'm not going to cover the details on how to re-index Magento. We assume that you know how to do that. And if you don't, just press the search box in the top right-hand corner of Understand the Knee and type in re-index or indexes into the search box in the top right. Now, if that's something which you would like to have automated in the background, I've already been in covered this in the Understand the Knee forums and in the video tutorials. And there's a link there and a simple script which you can just download and you can copy and paste the paths across to cPanel and then you can get Magento to automatically re-index it either every hour for stock and price updates and of course overnight for a full re-index so any new products which you've added will appear immediately. Now Dave, number nine, okay, this is like the 0.0001% where Magmi may be at fault here, which is, and that's UTF-8 characters. So if you're putting in accents or really weird or non-alphabet characters, then you may run into this issue when importing those products into Magento. And the answer is very, very simple. Blame Microsoft Excel for this. Okay, now it seems harsh, but basically Excel doesn't handle these characters very well, especially in CSV files. And the very simple answer is to go and download OpenOffice Calc, which is free, and then when you've edited that file, and then when you go to save the file, set the encoding as UTF-8 for the CSV file, and that solves the problem. Now, you may also be suffering from an issue with magic quotes. And again, I'm not going to cover that with you here, but there is a link on the page right now into the forums, which does discuss that topic in detail and provides a couple of solutions for you. And then finally, Dave, number 10. 
attribute identifiers. <laughs> oh, yeah. This has come up a few times, too. Yeah. No, this is really easily done. OK, and I've done it myself so many times. Now, I'm just going to point out over here on the right hand side. Can you see that we've got these two attributes in here? We've got one called extra small or x small. And we've got the other one called x hyphen small. Now, Dave, to me and you and to you listening to this, they both mean extra small, don't they? Yeah, both the same. Both the same. But when it comes to Magento and Magmi, they're not the same. And the reason why they're not the same is because of the capitalization for the letters. So if you type in X hyphen small in lowercase, Magmi and Magento see that as a different attribute value to capital X hyphen capital S and then M-A-L-L. Now, my biggest tip for you here is just get a standardized process in place, okay? Maybe it's just to use proper case with all of your attribute labels which you put in. So maybe you put in red, green, and blue, you would always have the first letter capitalized and maybe any double-barreled colors, maybe pinky blue, for example, you would have capital P for pinky and then capital B for blue. If you just follow a simple rule like that, then you won't end up with duplicates sat within your system. So in summary, Magmi basically beats Magento data flow imports hands down in every single way. Speed, flexibility, ease and just general common sense when it comes to creating products via CSV files. Magmi works off a single line per product, whereas Dataflow, you have lots of separate lines and that's not very human friendly to say the least. And I, I don't even think it's even developer friendly, if I'm frankly honest. But not to this Magento data flow too much because the exports are very handy and you can script those exports as well. Now, Dave, I've made all of these mistakes and a lot more. And if I can just help one person just like you not run into any of these mistakes, then the time which it took to record this video and write this article has been well worth it. Now, if you do have any questions, leave a comment underneath this blog post or ask over in the forums. And of course, if this video tutorial or this article has been able to help you, then you would be helping myself and Dave by pressing one of the social sharing icons down at the bottom. That would help us an awful lot. So from myself, Matt. And from me, Dave. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And we sincerely hope that this has been in solved some of the common issues which you can run into when using MagMe. Cheerios for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.